warmer outside, so we might just open the door and <laughs> warm it up in here. Um, really grateful for you guys, grateful for uh, Jared and Zach um, uh, this morning sharing their testimonies of just the way the Lord has worked um, in their lives. It, it, remarkable. Um, when Bruce was praying uh, before breakfast this morning and just the way the Lord has gripped our hearts, given us the faith to believe the gospel, that's very humbling. Certainly that's our theme um, of the morning. And I think as you, as we hear these guys today, um, it, it is thrilling how God works. And uh, it'll be a great testimony of his glory. Um, and uh, Zach's going to start us by just kind of sharing his his background and how the Lord uh, gripped him. And we'll move then to, to Jared as they had. Um, uh, Zach had a great part in that. Let me pray for us uh, in our morning. Father, we are so grateful um, this morning for your good action, your grace. Um, Father, I thank you. That while we were yet sinners, Lord Jesus would die for us. I thank you that you um, foreknew and predestined, called us uh, to yourself, have given us, um, now justified us so that we um, have been declared righteous. Um, soon we'll be glorified. And Lord, I thank you that for that, uh, for that day, we've never been this close before, so we're grateful. Um, and as we approach that, we ask that we would um, be sound ambassadors of the gospel. I pray today that you would use um, Zach and Jared in a great way, um, even as you've used them here at North Avenue, uh, to again um, uh, point us to the Lord Jesus and to help us to fix our eyes on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. So we um, commit this morning to you and very grateful uh, for um, just the work you've done um, in us and and uh, through these guys this morning, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, growing up, I grew up in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Um, my, I had uh, three brothers and one sister. Uh, and my parents were believers, so they would always read scripture with us. And one of my earliest memories was uh, at night gathering around uh, our bunk bed, all kneeling around our, the bottom bunk uh, that me and Jared now share, uh, and, <laughs> and praying with my parents uh, before we went to sleep. Um, so we, we would always hear the gospel growing up, and I think from an early age I had the head knowledge of what the gospel was, who Jesus was, what he had done for me, that I was a sinner. Um, we went to a bigger church and uh, the sinner's prayer was like a prevalent uh, thing in, in the altar call at the end of sermons. And so uh, one time our cousin was visiting, and he ended up walking the aisle at the end of a sermon uh, and confessed faith. And I was still young. I was maybe six years old. And seeing him do that, and every Sunday watching people walk the aisle, I thought, you know, growing up, I'm Getting older, I think this is something I need to do. If I really want to be a Christian, I need to walk the aisle. If I want to go to heaven where my parents will be one day, then I need to walk the aisle. I need to say the prayer. Um, and so I did that, and everybody told me, you know, like, you're a Christian now. You did great. You don't have to worry about anything. Like, the hard part is done. Uh, there's not much you need to do now. Just go to church and tell other people about the gospel, read your Bible, all that stuff. So, uh, throughout middle school, I would definitely say that my heart wasn't regenerate, um, but I remember we had one D now, like a, a weekend camp, and the speaker was talking about uh, depravity and where, how, how sinful our hearts are, that in our natural state we hate God and we love our sin, and I remember genuinely that I was, I was really convicted at that point. Um, I don't know if, just in all honesty, I, I can't pinpoint a certain time that I was regenerate or that the Holy Spirit began changing my heart, but I can say that I, I was feeling a conviction over my sin at that point. But obviously that doesn't mean that 
I responded in true faith, right? So throughout high school, uh, I, I, I liked going to church and being around people from church. I attended all the church events on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. I served in the preschool. Um, this is when I started playing guitar uh, for uh, like our youth group. And I like telling people about Jesus as well. So I would invite people to church and come. And one of my good friends um, got saved at this point, my junior year of high school, uh, coming to church with me. Praise God. Um, but I had a girlfriend my senior year of high school. And when I came to college, my first week of college, uh, she broke up with me, right? And uh, so at, I, this kind of sent me into a sort of depression. Like looking back, I can see that I was, I was, I think I was like in a state of depression at this time. Um, because instead of turning to God, uh, I started turning to other things. So I started turning to partying or hanging out with people who weren't Christian. And, you know, they would encourage me to do things that wouldn't ultimately uh, glorify God. And I think this really sent me into a deeper spiral where instead of turning to God, I was turning to material things and my sin for comfort, which obviously wouldn't ever really comfort me. Um, and I think, like, being at North Ave now and seeing all the testimonies of people who have gone through uh, real trials and turned to God in those trials, um, it's just such a great testament to God's grace, I think. But my freshman year of college that fall, like looking back now, I, I don't know if my heart was regenerate, that, regenerate at that point. I don't know if I was saved. If I would have died my freshman year, I don't know if I would have gone to heaven because I was living in unrepentant sin. Um, but towards the end of the fall semester of my freshman year, I, I met some Christian people. Uh, Wes and Hannah invited me to North Ave, so I started coming to North Ave. Um, I grew up with Sawyer Susie, actually, uh, which is kind of cool. So I saw him here, and that made me want to come more. Um, and then I met some Christian freshmen. I was in Luke Forrester's small group, uh, and I started being around Christians more. And I don't know if it was, well, I know it's in God's providence, obviously, but um, I don't know if, like, being around Christian people just kind of reminded me growing up, uh, there's just something more appealing about being around Christians in a time where I was struggling than being around people who weren't Christians. And so I started growing closer to my Christian friends and started growing further away from those who weren't Christians. Um, started coming to North Ave every week. Uh, and then my Christian friends from college told me, you know, Zach, what you're doing is not right. You need to stop all that stuff. And uh, by God's grace, I, I was uh, willing to listen to them. And uh, Daniel Walker uh, came up to me one Sunday. He was like, hey, Zach, why don't you come meet with me at Jason's Deli on Wednesday? And so I was like, uh, I don't know this guy, but okay. And so uh, I started meeting with Daniel Walker weekly. Uh, we started going through the Gospel of John. And uh, at some point, he introduced me to uh, the doctrines of grace, which in, in high school European history, I remember hearing about this guy, John Calvin, and his crazy beliefs that God chose us and we didn't choose God and whatnot. And I just thought that guy is crazy. But uh, meeting with Daniel Walker, we were going through the Gospel of John, and we started going through Tulip. And he pointed out scripture that corresponded with each letter. And I was like, well, I mean, yeah, that, make, that, that is what the Bible says. I can't argue with that. And so uh, I came to know the doctrines of grace. And I think that grew my faith. Um, and again, looking back, I can't pinpoint a time where I can say that this is when I was justified before God. But I can look back and see like the things I was doing and where my desires were versus where my desires are now. And uh, 
like the things I want to do, the people I want to be around. Um, I hate my sin now. Like my freshman year, I, I wouldn't say that I hated my sin. But now looking back, I can, I can see where, how the Lord has sanctified me over the past few years. Um, yeah. That's, that's great. That's now, Jared, Zach obviously played a huge— you guys are already living together at that point or not? How many years now? How many decades have you guys lived together now? <laughs> We've known each other since middle school, but we started living together sophomore year of college. Wow, okay. And uh, I think Jared finished middle school when he was 10. Is that about right? Did he jump the year not or two? Quite. <laughs> yeah. But tell us about, because this is remarkable, um, as you're watching Zach, you're learning a thing or two. Yeah, so I guess. Uh, I should start back when I was a kid. I, I grew up in a, a Christian household, and I said the, the infamous sinner's prayer when I was seven, not really because I wanted to know Jesus, but because I wanted to be part of the, the in-group of Christians, and I didn't want to go to hell. So I kind of grew up throughout my teenage years with that false assurance of salvation, but I was living in unrepentant sin, and I was chasing idols and but whenever I sinned I look back on that sinner's prayer and that was my justification so I didn't really feel any need to turn from my sin so this carried on throughout middle school and high school but on the inside I was growing in bitterness and enmity with God and I really started to blame God for everything that went wrong in my life and so uh, I went to UGA freshman year and now that I wasn't under my parents' authority, I was, um, I decided I wasn't going to go to church anymore. So this went throughout my whole freshman year. I stopped going to church. I really, I stopped reading the Bible. I, I grew very distant from God. And then we moved into sophomore year, and Zach and I started living together. And so right off the bat, sophomore year, Zach says, you should come to North Ave with me. And I was like, oh, not this. <laughs> <laughs> So really, I kind of got peer pressured into going. I, I didn't want to be ostracized. I didn't want to be cast out of 100 Dan's away. <laughs> so, so I started going to North Ave with him. And um, pretty much the first couple weeks I started going, Mark was teaching through Acts 1 and 2. And if you ever read Acts 1 and 2, there is a lot about God's sovereignty. I mean, just over the casting of the lots with choosing the next apostle and Jesus, Jesus' death being predestined by God before the foundation of the world. So we would go to church, and then I'd go home that night, and we'd have some late-night conversations. And I'd say, get a load of this guy talking about the sovereignty of God. That There's no way. But Zach would be like, I think, he's, I think he's serious. This is legit. And Zach's like, if you're interested, you can come to this Bible study with um, Papa Fred and Daniel Walker. And of course, I had a lot of opinions to express about this. So I'm like, all right, let's let's go, Jason's Deli. <laughs> so Daniel, Daniel and I, Jason's and Papa, Deli was the, the fighting ground. Yeah. yeah, the fighting ground. We 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 tore it up at Jason's Deli. We they were going through Ephesians one and two, which is like <laughs> God's sovereignty on steroids. I mean, it's talking about God chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. We were dead in our sins, and so we were all over it. But I was still resisting. I was like, there's no way that God is sovereign. I chose him when I was a kid, and I have free will. But all this talk about Christ's death and his sacrifice had really started to wear down on my heart a little bit. And I, I remember it was Halloween, October 31st, back in 2020. I was sitting in my room, and all of a sudden, I was just cut to the heart over my sin. And I really feel like God opened my eyes to my own need for a savior and I just I accepted his righteous judgment on that day but I still had not turned to him in faith yet so that day was kind of the beginning of really a two month long process of beginning to seek out God so all of a sudden the bible that was once very dry to me started coming to life and I started seeking out God. I didn't have an answer yet, but I knew the Bible was where I was going to find it. And all of a sudden, it was a, a joy to come to church and to actually 
um, learn about who God was and what Jesus had done for us. So I remember in January, it kind of, it came full circle for me. I was, we were on the way back from a, a spike ball tournament in Savannah. <laughs> I wasn't playing. I was just, you know, it was vacation. But we were, <laughs> we were on the way back, and all of a sudden, uh, it just hit me like a rock. I, I knew that Christ had died for me, and all of a sudden, I trusted him, in him. And I just, I knew Jesus in a way that I had never known him before. Before, it was just I wanted to know about Jesus, but all of a sudden it became I wanted to know who he was. And there was this kind of intimacy through the faith that I all of a sudden had. That's great. Zach, tell us about kind of friendship evangelism and your desire to, um, to invite Jared and to um, guys have the late night discussions. Uh, brouhaha sounded like some... Um, Tell us about those. Yeah, so um, I think there's uh, a special responsibility, like as Christians, if we say that we are friends with someone or that we would love someone, um, and they're either claiming to be a believer and not walking a life of faith, or even if uh, they claim to not be a believer— if we would say they're our friend, um, I think we have a special responsibility to share the gospel with those people. Uh, it's, um, also, it's like, it's kind of interesting. I think when I do share the gospel with somebody that I'm close with or that I spend a lot of time with, um, God uses that in a way to sanctify me because I know I got to be on guard when I'm around mm-hmm. that person. Like, I know that I need to walk what I'm talking when I'm around that person. Uh, but with Jared, I think he was, you were claiming to be a believer, right? I was, I always professed to be a Christian. Yeah, so he was professing to be a Christian, but I noticed that he didn't want to go to church and stuff like that or be around believers. Um, and I said, that's not right. <laughs> Which I think at the time, like initially, it may have come from like a, sort of pride on my part where I was like, I was like, I'm right and you're wrong. You need to go to church. But uh, we're talking about that in a few minutes. Zach. Yeah. <laughs> uh, especially like my freshman year at that point where I was in, in the state of unrepentant sin, I think it did come from a point of pride, which uh, it's kind of interesting at God's providence, I guess, how he, how he used that. Uh, but I, yeah, I guess initially it was like, a, a prideful, like, you need to go mm-hmm. to church if you say you're a Christian. But then it did transition, I guess, into, like, a love for Jared. Yep. And on the Spike Ball Tournament weekend. That, that is That's fantastic. Right. Yeah. Jared, tell us about after, um, now you've come to know Christ, and we're talking about three years ago, just a real desire to to grow, like you said, a love for the Word, but to memorize Scripture, something that we all need to do more of. Um, certainly, uh, Chronics modeled that for us well. Tell us about your desire to do that, and certainly you're gifted to be able to, to do that in a way that uh, uh, that's pretty special. But um, tell us about that, and then tell us how that transforms your everyday thinking. Yeah, I mean, the Word of God was what was used to save me in the first place. So I know through this process of sanctification that the Word is transforming us, and we need to be in it constantly to know Christ better. And really, I didn't really start memorizing Scripture until I started going to Josh's workout group, and I was so encouraged by his zeal for it that I I hopped on the train too, and I realized there there was so much depth in there, and we just have to be grounded in it every day, or else we're just going to start to drift. Yeah, and um, and as you've done it, how does that change, um, especially just the, your everyday thinking now in, in comparison to maybe three years ago? I mean, it comes down to Colossians 3 where um, it says, set your mind on where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, not on 
not on earthly things. So we're so tempted to be focused on all our anxieties and all our worries in this life, but we need to be casting that on God and seeking the kingdom every day. And I think that's what, you know, being grounded in scripture does for us. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, thank you guys for um, not only just sharing today, but uh, really modeling the way young men should should live in hunger for the Lord. You guys are a uh, tremendous encouragement, a great example of humility to us. Um, thank you for your uh, desire to teach the Word. You may know Zach um, teaches the junior bros, the, the younger guys, and uh, Jared's been helping us with Esther and um, just phenomenally gifted, uh, both of them in those ways, and so, so grateful for him. Um, and uh, Zach, if you would pray uh, for the rest of our morning here and just thank the Lord especially for um, drawing Jared to himself and, and uh, that, um, that, that, that he's done. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this morning. I uh, thank you that we could gather together and enjoy a meal and d- discuss our testimonies and your word together. Um, I thank you for Jared's salvation and, and that you would draw him to yourself, Lord, uh, through the gospel. I pray for the rest of our time this morning that you would be with those that would that are about to get up and, and talk about pride, Lord. I pray that uh, you would help each and every one of us uh, to be receptive uh, to your word and what you say on pride and how dangerous it is even uh, when it's hard for us to recognize it, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Mm. Amen. Thank you, guys.